All right, folks, several months ago, we released our first ride review and impressions of the completely redesigned sixth generation Trek Fuel EX. And today, after a lot of miles and a lot of test riders, we're gonna give you our final thoughts. So several months ago, you guys might have seen the video and write up from one of our testers, Dario, who's up in Bellingham. He was the first recipient of the new Trek Fuel EX, and he was absolutely loving the bike. Uh, might have even called it the high tower killer. And so today we're gonna share a little bit more from his experience as well as the rest of our crew's experience here in Bend and uh, some of the other Oregon trails that we've taken this bike to. The new Fuel EX, completely redesigned a lot of cool new things it is the burliest the heaviest maybe i would also even say the most capable and well-rounded trek fuel to date trek has this bike available amazingly in seven different sizes from extra small to double xl frames start at 25.99 with complete bikes starting at 36.99 uh, the carbon complete bikes start at the 62.49 price point and our bike here obviously being the top of the line spec uh, being that it is the 9.9 xx1 axis retails for a rather impressive ten thousand seven hundred and forty nine dollars also comes with fox factory suspension a hundred and fifty mil 36 up front and uh, 140 mil travel out back you will notice that this is not a fancy special proprietary shock which is a little different from trek right for so many years they always had weird through shaft stuff or reactive or you know you name it nothing gimmicky nothing custom here you can go out and pick any shock in fact uh, the new Fuel EX has a more or less progressive flip chip here. Uh, you could even run a coil shock on this bike if you'd like, and I think some riders would really appreciate that. So before we get into ride characteristics a little bit, something I think that's pretty neat that Trek offers. Um, you know, I know a lot of people are searching for value and Consumer Direct offers a lot of value. Um, I think Trek does a pretty good job of staying competitive with their prices. Um, they do offer free shipping and uh, assembly to a local dealer. So if you don't have one at your local shop, they'll ship it for free and have the mechanics at the shop build it. Usually bike shops will offer at least a free service, if not a year or whatever lifetime of, that you own the bike. So that's a little bit of an added benefit. Also Trek offers a $50 upcharge. So that local shop can then deliver the bike to your house. So if you really don't wanna leave and get that bike to the door feeling, you'll get a complete built ready to go bike. They also offer a no questions asked 30 day guarantee, which I think is pretty neat. Um, you know, if you're on the fence and you, you wanna buy a bike and you're not sure if you're gonna love it, no questions asked. I think that is a pretty cool policy and uh, I would imagine most people aren't gonna take Trek up on that. So let's get into it. Something that is pretty important and really neat, I think, especially for a bike in this travel category, uh, is that it is ready for angle adjust headset cups. Um, some people have, I don't know, been a little disappointed that Trek doesn't include them with the bike. Uh, from a, I guess, environmental standpoint, I'm not mad that they're not included with the bike. Sure, it's kind of a bummer you have to spend more money if you do wanna buy them, um, however, there's a lot of bikes that have been shipped to us with adjustable headset cups and we never needed them, right? So those had to be manufactured, shipped, the material, like, and they just end up getting wasted, right? Or sitting around in a shelf forever. So I think it's cool that a majority of riders probably aren't gonna need them. So we might as well save the material and not ship those to people who won't ever use them. But if you do wanna customize and tune the bike, uh, you know, for a little bit of an upcharge, you can get those angle adjust cups, take it from a 64 and a half degree head tube angle, which is the stock setting, uh, a full degree plus or minus, which is a pretty broad range, right? To have a 63 and a half degree head tube angle on a 140 bike is pretty wild. Speaking of customization, you've got more or less progressive uh, as well as high low with the minnow link. Um, and then you've got the ability to run a 27 and a half inch rear wheel. So adjustability is definitely the name of the game. This is a versatile bike for a lot of different riders. Um, I also forgot to mention, you can go up to a 160 mil fork up front. So coil, 160, 27.5 rear end, 
far end of the spectrum, right? Or you can run it in a high position and have a really fast bitchin' all around trail bike. This bike climbs incredibly well, both from an efficiency standpoint, as well as just like positional standpoint, right? Like there was definitely a lot of moments where I would just sort of see an offshoot or a, a little hiking trail up the side of a cliff. I would just stand up and go and the bike would just keep putting the power down, keep climbing and get me up that thing despite me thinking there's no way I'm gonna make it or I won't get past that crux move. And it would just keep going. And oftentimes the only reason I couldn't keep going was because I struck a pedal or the crank arm, which threw me off balance, um, which kind of is why I think high position could be a good way to go for some of the riders that are in more technical, you know, rocky or very tall, deep, rooty areas. Um, the downside to going to that high position is it took that reach from 485 to 491, which is a little longer than I like at 511. You know, Dario was is 6'2", I believe, maybe even taller than that. Um, so that reach was okay for him. The medium large is a bit shorter, um, but in the high position, it definitely got it closer to my kind of ideal, you know, 475, 480, 485 at the max kind of reach that I like. I don't know which way I would lean personally, medium or large at five or medium large or large at five foot 11, but um, it's something that is, I would say is worth considering. Trek's got a really cool geometry uh, chart um, that you can play with on their website. So you can kind of figure out what high, low setting you're gonna put your bike in, what head tube angle you're gonna put the bike in, and it will give you more accurate numbers for your application. I think that's really important to consider because when you look at it in one setting and that's not the setting you're gonna ride the bike in, it could change by five plus millimeters, which is noticeable. Uh, climbing, awesome, stiff, feeling bike, efficient, fast rolling bike. The flip side to that is this bike is stiffer than any other Fuel EX that has come out before it. Um, and that does mean more hand and foot feedback. Uh, and I would even go towards fatigue on long descents, really rough, high frequency, uh, chattery, breaking bumps, roots, or little square rocks that are just kind of pounding on you through the way. Two things are worth noting in that. The, the Bontrager RSL bar stem combo, while it is beautiful from a manufacturing standpoint, it is really neat. Uh, it lacks any adjustability in terms of bar roll or whatever. Most of our riders got along fine with it. Despite complaining, they can't change it. They didn't really feel like they needed to. Um, but still, I'd rather just see a, a traditional bar stem combo. Also, it's a very stiff bar and it's still really, really long. It comes with an 820 width. Um, and the narrower you go, the stiffer and more abusive it gets. So I think that's to, to, to blame for a lot of the hand fatigue. Uh, however, the much stiffer frame and suspension platform, right? This pivot has moved and, and gotten quite a bit higher. So it's changed anti-squat values, which makes, you know, pedaling platform push a lot better. Uh, the drawback to that is a little bit more feedback. It's almost kind of creeping towards uh, Santa Cruz VPP feel uh, in terms of like efficiency as well as like feedback. Um, you know, if you've you watched many of our Santa Cruz reviews, you'll say while they do this really well, they do struggle a little bit in other areas. And same can be said about this, right? It, it's fast, it's efficient, it's poppy. Um, it gives you a great platform in corners to push off of if you're in berms, if you're going off jumps or lips. Um, it doesn't blow through the travel like the old treks used to do. Uh, the flip side is, is that it just gives a little bit more of a stiffer racer you know, sort of a suspension feel. Uh, I think some riders may find that they want to run that less progression uh, setting to give it a little bit more of a softer off the top feel to kind of combat that. But nevertheless, it's worth noting, it is something that makes you constantly feel like you wanna push the bike harder and ride it faster though. This bike is absolutely comfortable going fast. It wants you to push it hard and that kind of a little bit sportier suspension feel makes it feel like there's just more in the tank and you're not making this bike like work too hard. So that's something that's really cool to note. Frame stiffness, also really impressive. Um, you know, again, 
maybe the casual you know cruiser type riders might feel it's a little too stiff in the saddle on long days if you're in really really bumpy or rough you know rocky areas but definitely not abusive i would say um, i think overall a very well-rounded and fun bike it makes riding hard uh, and like snapping that bike into obstacles or corners uh, an absolute joy it makes you just want to push hard so kind of moving on from you know uphill downhill climbing impressions uh, descending thoughts some of the features that stand out from this bike the internal frame storage here i think is really nicely executed um, dario obviously being in bellingham washington has spends a lot of time riding in wet muddy terrain he thinks that uh, Trek's execution and weatherproofing of this box is probably the best of all the bikes he's ridden. So water, ingress, mud, dirt, grit um, is very minimal with this kit. Very easy to access and use. There's a little tool pouch inside that kind of helps keep the frame nice and quiet. Uh, adjusting, you know, geo progression, very easy to do. Uh, the frame, everything stayed tight. Uh, which is nice. You know, we've definitely had some bikes in the past from Trek where hardware bolts have come loose. That seems to be sorted out. Um, the full length down tube protector is, well, almost full length, right? Uh, is, is really cool. Um, I think that's a nice feature. If you really want to get nitpicky and look at it, there's like a seam here and it kind of isn't dead straight pretty minimal i know maybe i'm getting a little too critical but nevertheless something that like that that line just kind of can bug some people if you got like ocd maybe i don't know bar stem combo that's a criticism i think i would like to see that go away just from everybody out there just maybe xc guys super light xc race bikes that's cool but not here the tool that is integrated in the bar stem really neat uh it didn't come with this cool red lanyard uh, we had to put that on after uh, the little flip up handle broke relatively quickly so that was a bummer um, but a very cool tool we like it it has all the essential stuff chain breaker all your allens and torx bits that you need so that is cool um, overall i think a solid package entry-level bikes coming in at a very solid price point uh, the the se5 tire spec not my favorite. Uh, I think the SE5 tires do well in dry climates. Um, so like maybe desert riders might do well, hard pack guys might do well, but I think, uh, well, I don't think, I know that once you get this tire into the wet, especially on like wet rock or wet roots, it is um, a bit sketchy. And that I think is a, a bit of a downfall, depending on where you live. Could not ever be an issue for you, or it could be something that makes you change those tires out very quickly. Other than that though, really, really awesome bike. Uh, so early on in the video, I referenced Dario's first ride, where he said he thinks he likes this bike better than the High Tower. Um, and granted, I, my time aboard the High Tower is limited, you know, less than his, but I would agree with him. I think uh, this bike, maybe isn't as fast of a pedaler, not quite as efficient, uh, but the flip side is, is that it is more capable descending. You've got more adjustability in terms of geometry, um, suspension settings, you know, wheel sizes, travel increases all around. I think this bike is just more of a complete package and a well-rounded package. So uh, that would be my pick. I think while some folks may have been turned off by the added weight and stiffness. There's probably a whole lot of other riders who don't necessarily want a big, gnarly, squishy 160 mil bike, but they want that geo, they want that stiffness, they want that ability to t attack their terrain, even if it doesn't warrant that, that much travel. And with this bike, you'll be able to get that efficiency and that speed pedaling on mellow or flatter stuff, um, but still have that confident position to really let that bike charge and do work underneath them. So um, overall, props to Trek. This is a very solid bike, and I probably would not buy this spec personally because I just ain't that rich, but there are some really awesome options that are more affordable. Um, and I think when you look at some of the alloy options, that's probably where I would be spending my money. Um, I think I'm making a change going to alloy bikes. They're just riding so good right now, and I'm really enjoying that feel. So uh, thank you guys very much for watching this video. Let us know if you have any questions down below. Um, 
your thoughts on the Fuel EX and just the evolution of trail bikes as a whole. We'd love to hear from you guys. Let us know what else you want us to check out and review in the future. Thanks for subscribing to the channel and we'll see you out on the trails.